Greetings to all of you in the audience and to those with us virtually. Today we celebrate and welcome Beloit College's 12th president, Eric Boynton. And we celebrate also all of you, the people in this audience, the people here with us virtually, the students, the community of people who are Beloit College's foundation and our strength and also worked to get us to this moment today. The search committee drew from a broad and diverse representation of the college and the community. The committee's effort took significant time and preparation over the course of nine months. The Russell Reynolds team reached out to over 150 sources, yielding 80 prospects. 35 of these applicants were reviewed by the search committee, and we had four rounds and some additional interviews. And following this extensive national search, Eric's energy, his bold ideas, and collaborative leadership clearly identified him as the president we need to lead Beloit College into the future. So I don't know how many of the search committee members are here, but I want to thank them for their contribution and their partnership. And so for those of you who are here, would you stand up? Thank you. I'm going to do this really quickly. Laura Grube, professor of economics. Um, Sonia Marie Johnson, who I did not see in those standings. Assistant Professor of Religious Studies, we have Ron Watson, Associate Professor of Health and Society and Political Science, who also co-directs career channels. He works on the Why Bother Wisconsin, the initiative to get young people to vote. And he's also President of the City Beloit Police and Fire Commission. And I name that because there's a lot of community overlap in these names. Rachel Burstrom, she's an Associate Professor of Biology, former co-director of Advanced Mentoring, She'll be leading the Health and Healing Channel next year, and she also serves in a community on the Rock County Board of Health. Eric, Erica Daniels, Chief of Staff for the college for over 10 years. She grew up in Beloit, so we considered her not just part of the college, but also part of the community, and she receives the Women of Distinction Award from the YMCA of Rock County next week. Dave DeGeorge. Um, it was really important that we have athletics represented, so he is the Beloit College's athletic director, baseball coach, with tremendous wins, more than in the history, and has been with the college for over 30 years, also born and raised in Beloit. We had two students, Brandon Jolly and Samya Gupta, neither of whom can be here today, but both of whom participated despite one being abroad and one student teaching. Tim McEvert, who is now in his ninth year as CEO of Beloit Memorial Health, 28 years with the health system, a graduate of Beloit College who stayed in the community for his entire career, and we hope there are many more like him. And then the trustees, Alex Catalan, year 10, Don Kent graduated in 77, Tori Key in 03, Dick Nemec graduated in 65, our current board chair for the past five years, and he also served as the interim president, 0908, and Steve Molly as the special advisor. And I wanted to name them all here, both to thank them and to really show you the breadth of this committee. So thank all of you on the search committee for your time and your critical input. Words cannot express my gratitude or how fond I've become. So to share his thoughts about Eric's selection, I'm pleased to introduce the chair of our board of trustees, as I just said, Dick Nemec. Dick? Thank you, Nina. Well, hello. It's great to be back in Beloit, and especially to be here on this very, very special occasion. Last week, the board considered the search committee's recommendations. At that meeting, the board enthusiastically and unanimously selected Eric. As a board chair, 
I've had the opportunity over the past four years to work with Eric as provost. I've been impressed by his creativity to establish career channels and other programs that enhance our students' academic studies and careers after graduation. Eric was particularly innovative when he faced the challenges posed by COVID in 2020. His curricular redesign allowed the college to operate without sac sacrificing academic rigor and was able to reopen safely. It was Eric's accomplishments and leadership skills, along with his enthusiasm, energy, collaboration, passion, boldness, and interpersonal skills that led to our selection. I speak for all our board members when I say we are looking forward to working with you, Eric, and determining what we can accomplish together. Now I'd like to turn the podium over to Erica Daniels, as noted, the college's chief of staff, secretary of the board, and absolutely a prominent member of the broader Bullard community. Erica. Good afternoon. In the words of my dear friend, Scott Bierman, it's a great day to be a Beloiter. As I stand before you this afternoon, it's a pleasure and an honor to welcome the 12th president of Beloit College, Dr. Eric Boynton. As a lifelong Beloiter myself, I have a firsthand understanding of the importance of the relationship between the city and the college. Beloit College is a four-year college, but it is also the community's college, as it is the only institution of higher inst of higher education within the city. This is important because without the community, there is no college. This city, which is intriguing in every aspect, has an energy that is no different from the college that lies within it. In short, there's something special about Beloit. There is a new, unique opportunity that lies before us. Within the last year, our community has welcomed a new superintendent, a new city manager, and now a new college president. The possibilities for the city of Beloit are infinite. Eric, as we embark upon this new journey, the mission of Impact Beloit will serve as a charge as you become one with the community. I am looking forward to working with you as we develop the next generation of leaders, innovators, entrepreneurs, and activists, starting by enhancing community relationships in our hometown of Beloit. At this time, I invite Professor Rachel Bergstrom to the microphone. Hello, everybody. What a beautiful day to be able to celebrate. Um, as members of the committee, uh, we took seriously the mandate of collaboration and integrity in selecting the next president for Beloit College. The presidential perspective, which was synthesized by thoughtful input from the Beloit College community, generated interest from a national pool of excellent candidates with varied backgrounds. We saw in many of our candidates a strong future for Beloit. The mission of the college rang true with all of them. They saw our history and culture, understood our goals and potential, and were ready and willing to jump in and be a part of the unique Beloit experience. The conversations with the candidates and among the committee were robust, and we didn't shy away from the very real challenges that are facing us, um, but we also celebrated the things that make Beloit home for so many of us. We find in Eric Boynton a new president who demonstrates an unmatched passion for the college. He can quickly and thoughtfully respond to the immediate needs of the college while also planting seeds for a bright future. We know him as a productive collaborator, a strategic and tireless innovator, and a true champion for Beloit College. As provost and throughout the search, Eric has shown that he is so very willing and excited to continue to learn and grow, always open to new ideas and constructive criticism. 
These qualities allow him to see the best in what we do here at the college and to turbocharge it for the next iteration. We know that he will continue to be informed and guided by the community and the history of the college to load the spring that will launch us into this next chapter. Though I speak for myself here, I think many of the committee members would agree that this search was a wonderful opportunity to learn more about the college through both each other's eyes and the eyes of the many excellent candidates that we encountered through the process. We're so excited to welcome you, Eric, President Boynton, to your new role, and we can't wait to see what's next. Now I'm pleased to turn the microphone over to the man whose very big shoes he will have to fill, President Scott Bierman. <laughs> the sun shines bright on Beloit College today. There is a kind of coat-free warmth in the air. Leaves on the burr oaks are showing their confidence that spring is truly here. Eric Boynton will be the college's 12th president. Congratulations, Eric. And congratulations, Beloit College. In many ways, I stand as the impediment between you and Eric Boynton. But right this minute, I really mean it's up to me to turn this microphone over to your next president, which I will do shortly. Yet, yet I will take a well-spent moment in front of this assembly to welcome and thank Julie Boynton, who is sitting right up here in front. Julie, will you stand just for a moment? Thank you, Julie, so much for your support and encouragement of Eric in accepting the offer of the presidency from the Board of Trustees. Next to Julie is Melody Behrman. I struggle to find the right words to thank Melody for the thousands and thousands of ways she has generously and lovingly offered her time and talent in support of Beloit College's mission and, of course, me personally. For the last 14 years, the balance of trade in our household has been spectacularly out of balance. Melody, I have some appreciation for how much I owe you. Um, do my best to pay off some fraction of it. Thank you very, very much. We all appreciate the insights that rain upon us from deep reflection. So Eric, let me share a small number of these. First, over my 14 years, Eaton, chapels, bells have rung nearly 21,000 times pretty loudly every 15 minutes. 30 yards from our house. <laughs> Lots of things have broken down at Beloit over those 14 years, but not those bells. <laughs> About a third of the time, they have rung just as I was on the cusp of sleep, reminding me in their not too subtle way, there is work to be done. How helpful is that? In the future. <laughs> Second, alumni at Bloit College care less about their class year than probably any other college in the country. Better to think, Eric, of alumni as pre-Bloit planners, thriving Bloit planners, struggling Bloit planners, post-Bloit planners, and renewed Beloit planners. For example, among those board members on the search committee, Dick Nemec is a pre-Beloit planner, Don Kent is a struggling Beloit planner, Nina Weisberg is a post-Beloit planner, as is Tori Key and Alex Catalan is a renewed Beloit planner. Our next board chair, Don Carson, is a thriving Beloit planner. I kind of love this aspect of our alumni, among many other things. Third, 
There are a number of stunningly valuable treasures at Beloit College. Among them is our archivist and college historian, Fred Burwell. <laughs> Beloit College's history and its connections with the city's history is among the most remarkable, intriguing, and impactful histories of any college in the country. And Fred is simply a miracle of nature. How many times have I gone to Fred for yet another Beloitish tidbit full of substance, creativity, and often whimsy? Our history is a treasure trove. To know it is to love it. Fourth, whenever the work of the college weighs heavy or the disease of cynicism begins to wrap its unholy tentacles around my world, I would just sit down with some students and ask them how they're doing. What classes have rocked their world? How was their spring day? What was their favorite panel on symposium day? What are their summer plans? This is a tonic for my soul. Fifth, and most importantly, I would not trade my relationships with the Beloit community for anything. Board members, faculty, staff, alumni, Rock County friends, and students, of course, the students, every day. I've leaned on, learned from, and laughed with so many of you in this room. Many of you watching on live stream, and many more who will never hear these words. My heart overflows with gratitude for every single day at Beloit College for 14 years. The depth of our collective commitment to the values of Blake College and the mission of Blake College alongside our collective commitment to support each other in this principled and essential work is inspiring. These 14 years define for me what a life of purposeful consequence looks like. This is your future world, Eric. Maybe we can compare reflections in a few years. But I also have a couple of reflections that might be useful for the Blake College community. You. First, do not believe it. When you're in a conversation with Eric and your time is running short and there's a pause and you're pretty sure you should pull your stuff together and get on with the next part of your day and then Eric looks at you dead in the eye, and with a little smile, says, just one more thing, it'll only take a minute. <laughs> I guarantee there is not just one more thing, and that none of the things will take just a minute. As soon as Eric says this to me, I've taken to texting Erica Daniels and asking her to please tell my next appointment, I will be at least 45 minutes late. like yesterday. <laughs> Second, letting Eric be Eric was something that I regularly have done in nearly all of my interactions with him over the last four years. I offered Eric the job as provost because I was completely confident of his skills as a provost and I wanted those skills to shine and for Eric to know his leadership as provost was valued and supported by me. I confidently embraced letting Eric be Eric, and Eric confidently delivered. The flip side to my earlier reflection about the importance of the Bloit community to my presidency is the community's appreciation of the importance of their partnership in supporting the college during Eric's presidency. Help Eric be Eric during his presidency. Embrace it with confidence. Partner with it. 
Beloit College will be the beneficiary, guaranteed. So now is the reason we're all here. I had nothing but trust in the amazing team that had been put together under Nina Weisberg's leadership to lead the search for the next president. But when I learned that they had successfully brought their search to a conclusion with the hiring of Eric Boynton, the college's brilliant provost, I did a happy dance in my office. I knew the future of Bloit College, like the day we are enjoying right now, shone bright indeed. Please join me in welcoming the 12th president of Bloit College, Eric Boynton. Thank you, thank you for those kind words. Uh, as my first act of president, I think I'll do something about the bells. <laughs> Maybe only during certain hours of the day. Uh, thank you, all of you, for coming out. What a pleasure it is to see all of you and to be here in front of you. Uh, I'm so glad and, and happy to be here. This, this is a wonderful event. Thank you for coming out. And thank you for all the kind words, some of which maybe were deserving. I appreciate the effort and the care that the presidential search uh, showed during this process, and I know that I'll be a better leader because of the search process. Through the rounds of questions, the interview preparation, they made me dig deeper, they made me think harder about what the next steps we need to take together in order to move forward in the coming years. So let me begin by echoing thanks, as we've been doing tonight already, or today already. I want to begin by thanking the chair of the search, Nina Weisberg, who guided the process, uh, the entire process, which is no small task. Nina led by example and carried herself always with authority, grace, and dignity. Thank you also to Dick Nemec, chair of the board, and who served on the committee. I know the two of you worked tirelessly to direct the rigorous and inclusive search uh, over these past few months. Thank you to the two of you in particular. Alex Catalan, Don Kent, Tori Key, I appreciate all of you. Your direct approach to the process really uncovered what matters most. And you demonstrated your abiding love for this college and a real desire to see it thrive. I've been uplifted by your collaboration and I look forward to deepening and extending those relationships. Okay, so at this point, it would be if we were at the Academy Awards, uh, music would start playing to get me off the stage because I've thanked so many people, but What's curious about the search, right, is that there are cast of thousands among us on this search. Uh, and so um, I'd like to thank a few more people before I get played off the stage. So indulge me here a bit. So the search committee was made up of every part of the Bloit community, the wide community. And they deserve props for their effort and not just because they chose me. So a big thanks to Erica Daniels, Dave DeGeorge, Rachel Bergstrom, Laura Groove, Ron Watson, and Sonia Maria Johnson. As staff and faculty members with busy schedules, you devoted the time and the energy when those two things are scarce resources. I'm inspired by your commitment to the college and to our students. Thank you to Tim McEvitt, alumnus and CEO of Bloyd Health Systems, who also, to say the least, has a busy day job. Tim and I connected in ways that make it clear to me and I hope to him that we share much in common and I look forward to the opportunities to collaborate in the coming months and years with Tim. Having Tim on the committee was particularly helpful as we re-engage and build richer partnerships with those who do business in the city of Beloit. So my wife and I, Julie, are particularly excited to move into the president's house, bells and all, this summer to introduce everyone not only to, or to the only remaining Boyntons who live in our home, which is our three dogs. So that'll be a change we'll have to get used to. I also look forward to seeing all of you as we walk them down the river. So thank you to Samia Gupta, Brandon Jolly, the two students, representatives who without a doubt shone bright in this process. Of course, students are why we do what we do here. And at Beloit, we're monomaniacal about our North Star of paying attention to student experience. 
So thanks again to all who participated in the presidential search, your careful deliberations of leadership and thoughtful consideration of the strategic directions for the college embody the value of a diversity of thought that makes every decision better. I know that leading Beloit is a great responsibility and I'm grateful for the trust that you put into me. Thank you. To Scott Bierman, I want to thank you and Melody, right, for your leadership over the past 14 years that exemplifies the passion and profound commitment you hold in the hearts for our students, our staff, our faculty, our community, and for me as well. Thank you. It'll be my honor to build on your work at the college. Well, thank you, Scott and Melody. Finally, I want to thank my wife, Julie, whose steadfast support over the many years of marriage only increased over the past few months. So if Beloit is my passion, Julie is my reason. You're going to find out that one of the best things about having me in the presidency is that we're a package deal. And she's a talent and a force for good. And many of you who already know her can envision how she will partner with us in the coming years to create a thriving college. Thank you, Julie. So it's often advised in the introductory speeches like this is that we'd be very careful about a detailed blueprint for the future. So I, I listen, right? Believe me, I've had a hard time sleeping the past couple weeks because I'm eager to dig into the enrollment strategy for next year, some ambitious fundraising goals, and engaging the Beloit community as, as president. There's a time in the not too distant future for that speech, but I'm gonna need your help in, in thinking about those problems as, as those challenges as we, as we face them down in the coming months and years. But today, the appropriate question is, why do I want to be the next president of Beloit? Beth asked me this question just now as she came in. Simply put, I love this place. It's the institution, my alma mater included, that I feel most passionate about. And let me tell you why. During my time here, I've learned that one of the really remarkable things about Beloit is our, is our proven track record of attracting remarkably gifted and devoted staff and faculty who are laser focused on the success of our students and their bright futures. Their level of engagement to the mission of Beloit is inspiring, and no doubt one of the reasons why Beloit stands out among its peers. Now, the opportunities to experience true and exhilarating joy in the job of being provost are not apparent. But occasionally, right, there are such moments, and this is a wonderful one. And this is one that reminds me about why it is that I'm here in front of you. Back in 2020, I had the pleasure of informing Professor Sonia Maria Johnson that she had won the Undercoffler Award for Excellence in Teaching. I went to her office to share the good news, and I'll never forget what happened next. Both Sonia and I shed unexpected tears of joy, pride, relief, satisfaction. is a complex mishmash of emotions flowing from her commitment to Beloit's tr uh, mission to transform lives and reveal futures only possible because of Sonia's exemplary work. A desire and commitment to teaching is what drove me to pursue a PhD in philosophy, become a professor and a provost. And I know that this same flame burns bright in the faculty and staff here. We are grounded in a shared mission to serve our community with a commitment to make an impact on the lives of students. And that mission, that charge, to make an investment in the bright futures that shimmer on the horizon of our students' lives, the work that we anticipate and is yet to come in the lives of others, and breathing life into other people, this is our passionate expectancy, future-oriented. This is what moves this is what moves our community to be a place that empowers students to lead lives of high achievement and embraces personal responsibility and public contribution to making our college, our community, our state, and our world a better place. This is why I want to be 
Floyd College as president into the future. And this is why, as president, I will work ceaselessly, creatively, and collaboratively with all of you to ensure that our students are supported and transformed by their experiences in and outside the classroom, to ensure that prospective students and their family from across the nation and the world are compelled to attend our college and clearly understand its significant value, to ensure that alumni, donors of the college, friends of the college and local community understand our commitments and are equally compelled to offer significant support and engage in robust partnerships with us. To be sure, we're facing some real challenges and there is much work to be done together in the moments ahead, but I'm excited about Boyd's next, I'm excited to be Boyd's next president. I'm excited about Boyd's pre next president too, but I'm excited to be <laughs> Boyd's next president because I believe in the future of this institution. I have seen the resilience, dedication, the kindness of our staff, our faculty, our students. And I also know that behind us are alumni who care deeply for this place. And not just for us to muddle through, but to see us thrive. We also have committed partners in the city of Beloit, some of them who are in the audience right now, who know that college's success is intimately tied to the success and continuing health of the city and vice versa. I look forward to leading with all of you the national conversation about what it means to flourish as a small college in the 21st century. I am deeply honored to be Boyd's next president. I can't wait to get started. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming today, for those of you who tuned in and for those people who might play this later. It is a great day for Beloit College. Um, this is our moment to imagine what's next, to build on the work of Scott Bierman and others as people have said. So we can't wait to get started, Eric. Terrific words and if you can stay and we hope the students will come in mass, there'll be ice cream outside on the patio for this beautiful spring day and to enhance the celebration. Thank you. Yeah.